morning or afternoon, depending on which part of the country you're at. Um, welcome to another Milkshake Monday full of fun education. My name is Tammy Cott, and I'm a color ambassador and art team member for this lovely company called Z1 Concept North America. Z1 Concept is the makers of Milkshake and also No Inhibition um, product lines and color lines. Some of you might be familiar with this brand already, some of you might not, so I encourage any questions you have along the way, just pop them in the comments. Um, we love feedback, we want to hear from you, um, and I try to make this as fun and interactive as possible. So, here we go. I have been with the company for almost 10 years now, and as such, I've been able to see Milkshake grow and flourish and add all kinds of products to the arsenal um, that stylists are really requesting. So what I love about this company is the fact that we really have your back when it comes to your work in the salon each and every day. Um, so we have this whole system specifically for lightening hair called Decologic. So Decologic, the whole framework of it is logical decolorizing. Tools that give you the ability to create any type of blonde on any type of hair, uh, tools that really open up your creativity, um, and tools that are unmatched when it comes to condition of the hair um, and tonality of the hair. So today, we're gonna focus on the newest powerhouse um, and my most recent love affair, Decologic Black Lightener. Decologic Black Lightener is a charcoal infused lightener. It comes in a tube like this, um, and it's got a great creamy consistency. It can be mixed. Um, the, the mix ratio can change varied on how you want to use it. So today we'll talk about um, how to use it in a freehand method or how to use it in foiling methods. Um, but the coolest thing about this product, it is black. When it comes out, it is black. And that's from the charcoal. So what this product does is it actually tones the hair as it lightens it. Um, leaving it up to you whether or not you wish to tone the hair afterwards. It's always going to depend on where you're starting, what's on the hair, and where you're going is going to make that decision for you. Um, so what I've done is I've actually pre-colored a mannequin so that I could show you what the end result is going to look like before I take you through this technique. Okay. Um, before we get started on that though, I do want to give a shout out to my girl Jillian who's behind the camera today. Um, who took some time out of her schedule to be able to help me out. And she actually, we were kind of doing this in between clients today. This is like salon reality, COVID reality for real right now. Um, so if her client happens to pop in at the tail end of this, we'll all just give her a collective hello from the ether. Um, and that's how it is. So this is just the real life talking. Okay, so this is Deborah. Someone commented that you're matching the model in the back. Oh, <laughs> dress and hair. It was subliminal. <laughs> okay, so this is Deborah. Um, and Deborah was originally sort of this really warm level six, almost a level five. And what I wanted to do because because Decologic Black is such a powerhouse in its capabilities to lift specifically through cosmetic color, is I pre-colored Deborah with a level three, 3.31 from our Creative Permanent Color Line. The reason I chose that shade is because it is dark. It is very, very dark. Um, and we all know from experience, the darker the shade that you choose and the more warmth in that shade, the more difficult it is to get through when our customer inevitably decides that they want to lighten their hair. Um, so. Decologic Black has become kind of my go-to lightener in the salon for getting through cosmetic color because it lifts so evenly and so true. It leaves the hair in great shape and it helps to soften that underlying warmth. Um, in this case, I did go ahead and tone as well because I still didn't love that underlying pigment, but again, that choice is yours as the artist. Um, so this is really what we're going for today with the technique. And I'll talk about the toner too afterwards, um, what I selected for this particular look because I did tone her half and half because I couldn't decide what I wanted to do for her. So I thought, why not show you both? Um, so the technique that we're gonna do today is going to give you this look. And when I was 
Looking for inspiration on this, I sort of realized we are on the precipice of spring. So everybody wants to go lighter, uh, but most of, most of the clients anymore are wanting something that's really low maintenance, that's gonna get them in and out of the salon as quickly as possible. Um, and again, just that low maintenance factor. It's gonna, they want it to look natural too. So what I was thinking is, okay, all the time we talk about natural looking highlights and how does the sun lighten our hair? And we do a lot of balayage techniques that try to reflect that. But what I end up seeing is still lots of lightness coming from the part or coming from the top. Most people with lengthy hair, if they're out in the sun, they're wearing their hair tight up into a ponytail. So I started thinking, where does that lightness really fall? Typically, it's going to be throughout the perimeter and then through the end. Right? So if you think all the hair goes up into a ponytail, all of this in here, all of this in here is going to stay darker. So that's the look that I wanted to create today. Um, and that's the technique I want to share with you all, is it will be an all over balayage or more of even an ombre if you want to call it that, but more subtle, toned down, and easier for your client to maintain. So let's crack on. Oh, I need this still. Silly. <laughs> okay. So this is Debbie 2, and Debbie 2 is already pre-sectioned, okay, to go along with her cut. She's got a great fringe, so I've isolated the fringe, and I've just sectioned them kind of loosely in ponytails. I like to do this whenever I'm going to do any hand painting specifically because it keeps the hair from crimping up. When we twist and twist and go like this, then we've got a whole bunch of curls to deal with. And when we're trying to paint and get nice soft blend, it becomes very challenging if the hair isn't prepared. So make sure the hair is smooth. And if you use these little rubber bands, it helps keep the hair really smooth for your sectioning. So I've got two in the front. I've got two up top here. sort of that inner form section. And then I've split the back in half and I've split the sides from the back. Okay. On a diagonal here, just following the curve of the head. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the back and I'm going to use the Decalogic Black mixed with our clay balayage lightener. I'll tell you why once I get to the technique. Um, and I'll show you the placement of this through here. So I'll use that through the back and these top sections. And then throughout the front sections, I'll be using the Decalogic Black just on its own with a 30 volume. All right. Let me get a few things here. So I've already measured out, can you see that okay? Mm -hmm. I've already measured out 40 grams of the clay lightener, Decalogic clay lightener. And what's cool, one of the cool things about Decalogic Black is you can add this into any of our existing lighteners except Total Roots. Total Roots is the only one that you cannot add this into, and that's because Total Roots is ammonia free. Um, but all of the other lighteners, the white powder, the blue powder, um, you can add the clay, you can add this into the formula and it will actually help you achieve more lift and give you that tonalizing property. So traditionally, our clay lightener is gonna give you four levels of lift. On somebody who's coming in with very dark hair, often they're looking for a miracle, right? They want balayage, they want it painted, but they want it to be like level infinity blonde. So having this, the ability to add your, your Decalogic Black into your lightener, huge game changer in the salon. So you can add up to 30%. So I've already got 40 grams of my clay and I'm going to add in, turn this so you can hopefully see it. I'm gonna add 12 grams. So you see how it's black and creamy. And then because 
since I'm doing a painted technique, my mix ratio is going to be one to one and a half. Using a 30 volume. So I had 40 grams of powder to start, so then I'm going to add 60 grams of my 30 vol. And then let's see, I had 12 grams, so that would be an additional 18 grams for the Decalogic Black. When I signed up for hair school, nobody told me I was going to have to do so much math. But here we are. Okay. What are you giggling at? <laughs> you. <laughs> I would love to hear from some of you too in the comments if you're using this product, how it's working for you in the salon, what you love about it, how it's changed your color approach. I know sometimes it can seem overwhelming. Look at that beautiful color. <laughs> Whenever a new product comes out, uh, but I think just figuring out where it fits alongside, you know, the other products is really important. So again, this is a very special lightener. It can lift up to seven levels, so it is a bit stronger than some of our other lighteners. It can be added into our lighteners, and it also has that tonalizing effect. So, there it is all mixed together. Beautiful gray shade. And it will stay that color through the entire lightening process. Through the whole process. Okay. Someone commented, I thought it was a nice bleach and tone product. It is. It's great. It's an awesome, awesome product if you're going to lighten the hair and tone it simultaneously. What I advise, however, if you're speaking of using it on that root area. If somebody is already very, very, very light blonde, you need to work especially careful to avoid overlap. I will tell you that not only from a manufacturer standpoint, but from personal experience. Of course, the, the, um, the very first person I used this product on was myself. Rather, I had Jillian use it on me. And underneath my pink, I'm very, very platinum blonde. And let me tell you what, where we overlapped, it was the most beautiful, smoky blue. <laughs> However, it wasn't what we were looking for. So while you can absolutely use it for a retouch bleach and tone or just an all over bleach and tone, you wanna be careful not to overlap on that previously lightened hair because you could get a little too much color deposit. Um, Christy commented, I've been adding about 10 grams of black to every highlight I do, and it is a game changer. Awesome, Christy. Thank you for the feedback. Okay, so I'm starting in my back white, bleh, 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 back right quadrant. Um, and what I'm going to do, remember I said I wanted to try to make sure that this looks like she had just had her hair in a ponytail all day and then, is I'm going to make sure that all of this hairline hair receive some of these highlights. So I'm gonna start with really fine sections around the hairline. I'm still going to paint it, but I'm gonna keep them fine so they can become fully saturated. I think a lot of times when we lighten hair, we focus so much on this internal area and we, we can forget about the external area. So what I'll do is I'm taking a very fine slice that follows the shape of the hairline. Everybody see that okay? Do my best to stay out of the way. So here's another trick when you're using a hand painted technique. Try to use flat clips instead of your um, clips that you would use for like a haircut, the, the jaw clips. Again, that is to keep the hair as flat as possible, right? So we keep it nice and smooth. I'll also be utilizing the Pro Color Equalizer. This is a game changer too for any kind of coloring service, but I use it when I'm doing color or lightener because this equalizes the porosity of the hair. So when we're dealing with lengthy hair, we don't get pockets in there. So this really helps to achieve a nice even result at the end. 
And what you do is simply just a couple sprays on each section, comb it through. It's especially helpful when you have lots of texture in the hair and it gets very staticky. Um, or anybody who has like naturally textured curly hair and it has a tendency, you know, to want to puff up, a little bit of a mist will help you lay it flat as well. I'll be using a balayage board today. Um, and I'll also be using one of the new brushes that we just came out with. This is great for covering like lots of hair at one time, but it's got a really soft finish on it. So you can kind of feather it out towards the end. Um, but you can cover a lot of space with this one. My first step, be using a, an existing brush that we had, and I'll take a fair amount of product, and I'm, see, I don't know how to do this where you can see. I'm going to use the smooth side of my balayage board. Ooh. And I'm going to paint my lightener across it. Okay. This makes it very easy for me to go in with my brush and take just a small amount of product at a time. Too much product on a brush and you have a messy balayage. We've all been guilty of doing it in the salon. Um, so utilizing it like this really helps you. And I do it on this side instead of the textured side so I can really get all of the product off of it. Okay, here we go. I think that's covered most of the bases. Any questions so far? Or is everybody just really Everyone's just watching. Paying attention. Okay. I'm going to come forward. Yeah, go ahead. So here we are. Very fine, thin section. I'm going to come in here and take a small amount of product. Okay? And then I'm just going to lightly paint it. I'm going to get pretty close to the scalp here. So I'll do both sides first. And then I'll fill in the fill <clears throat> fill in the middle. Okay. And I'm using a very light touch. You can see the hair is barely moving. Once I get to the ends, I'm gonna lay it on the area where it's saturated here, and I'm gonna saturate it some more. Okay. Now I'm just going to drop it. I'm going to be using the soft stripes today. You certainly could use foils, or if you're a person who likes to just go freestyle and lay the hair down, that's okay too. But just remember that where these naked hairs touch before this dries, they could have a little bleedage there. There's nothing more frustrating to me than spending so much time on a hair color and blow drying it and seeing that you've put bleed marks in it. And it happens to literally all of us all the time. I know we all like to believe that we never do it, but we do. Um, so using a mesh strip or anything like this is just a really easy way to prevent that from happening. These ones are reusable too. They're washable. Pop them in a garment ba bag, throw them in the washer. So I'm going to do the same thing for a second strip here. Really fine section. Spray it with the Pro Color Equalizer. Take my board, it's already loaded up. Hopefully you can see through my board. Same thing here. So I take and I, a small amount of color and see how I keep it just on the tip of the brush. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. Come in. Light, 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 light touch. So the reason I'm choosing this brush again is because I love the way that it's got a little bit of feathered ends on them. So it's a softer touch to the hair. 
not as worried about pushing that product through. Um, but it has lots of compact bristles, so I can cover a lot of territory at one time. It's especially important if you're working on any lengthy hair. I'm going to more fully saturate the ends here. Okay. Lay it down. Lay one more over. Now, before I switch to larger sectioning, I'm going to take this section, another really fine hairline section. And I'm talking fine, fine. If you want full saturation for blonding, you need to be able to read a newspaper through that hair. Little tiny print between, in, in between the hair, or through the hair, I should say. That's how you know you have a fine enough section. Another option with the Pro Color Equalizer is you can actually spray the entire hair first. Um, I just prefer to spray it section by section because then the hair is not super dry again. So I'll take a little bit of my product. This time I'm going to leave my board down because it's kind of a little bit of an acrobatic angle here. So remember, I'm going for that ponytail effect. And don't worry about that. We can go feather that out afterwards. Sometimes you can get in here and use a little finger action. And then I'm not going to saturate this, I'm just going to sweep it down toward the end. Perfect. We'll just flip it over. We don't even have to use another mesh strip for that one. And then now is where I'm going to start taking thicker section. Okay? Following the curvature of the head, so it's sort of diagonal sort of horizontal, okay? And now what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to actually apply the lightener in like the opposite. So the, the sectioning is going here and I'll apply the lightener like this. Uh, question. Yes. On a root retouch, would you suggest adding conditioner to the pre-lightened hair in the event the hair color or the hair was to overlap? I would just avoid overlapping, period. Okay. Uh, <laughs> That's just it. Because once you, once you start adding things to it, I mean, a barrier can help for sure. But if, it's, if you're worried about overlap, I would just choose... Oh my goodness, Tammy. Keep it clean here. I would just choose a different lightener. We've got so many that maybe this one wouldn't be the one for that. Is there another question? Um, yes, how long would you keep it on the hair? Um, so this process is up to 60 minutes. So up to an hour. Depends on your desired level of lift. Okay. You have to check it. This lightener remains this color for its entire duration. You cannot see through it. You cannot tell what shade it is you have to take a test strand. And it's something that we should really be doing anyway, even with other lighteners, white lighteners or blue lighteners. The product inhibits us from seeing what the tone really is. So take a spray bottle, spray the hair and wipe it off so that you can really see uh, what your color is. Make that a little easier on myself. Okay. So this is a technique in the salon you could whip right through. So I'm, I'm again, I'm taking a little bit larger sections here as I go up the hair. So why? Why? Don't twist it, Tammy. Why am I taking larger sections as I move up the head? Because I want all of this internal to stay 
darker. I don't want as full of saturation as I do through the ends, okay? So once again, remove little product, come in on the edge here. And again, for those of you who are just joining us, I'm working with a mixture of our clay balayage lightener from Decologic, and I have mixed into it 30% of the newest lightener in our family, Decologic Black. Decologic Black is made with charcoal, which is a powerful antioxidant. Antioxidants are important because it helps protect our hair, helps keep it shiny, helps keep it healthy, so on and so forth. Okay, so I'm saturating through the ends here, and I'm setting that lightness on a diagonal. I always feel like I need 20 trays when I color hair, like no matter what, even if it's one all over color, like by the end of it, I've used every clip and brush and everything. Okay, so again, taking half inch-ish partings, following the round of the head, but then I'm going in and setting the color on, a, on the opposite diagonal. That way, where the hair is the densest, it stays the darkest. Where it's the least dense, it stays the lightest. And that way, it looks like she's had her hair in a ponytail for a few days at the beach. It's great, too, because this way you get what I like to call convertible hair. If she wears her hair down, it looks much deeper at the root and lighter throughout. If she wears her hair up, it looks a lot lighter, and then her ponytail's all blonde. Very cool. All right, so once again, I will take my board and I will take some product and I will paint it on my board. And I like to spread it out nice and thin like this, again, because it makes my job easier. I can go in and extract, if you will, the exact amount of lightener I am looking for. Take my brush. Scoop a little. Had a little too much on my brush that time. Keep, I'm trying to keep this balayage board out of the way too, so. Hopefully. You're doing a great job. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when you're being filmed versus working on an actual customer because your body positioning has to be so much different and I'm like I should probably go join the circus at this point I can like contort myself okay so I'm following that diagonal and sometimes what you'll see me do is I'll come in a little lower than what I want to be because that way I can feather it up Okay, you can see this consistency is so nice and creamy. And that's what I love about this lightener. It's really easy to use whether you're doing a painted method, um, whether you're using foils, or whether you're doing total decolorization. So your mix ratio is gonna change based on your technique, right? So here, I'm using a mix ratio of one to one and a half because I'm painting. And even though I'm using mesh strips to separate it, it's still that one to one and a half gives me the texture I need to be able to control where the product goes. If I were doing more of a traditional foil where I'm using the foil as a platform, that is where I would mix um, a one to two ratio, okay? So one part, lightener and two parts oxidizer. Now, if you're going for total decolorization or what some people call a soap cap or color remover, whatever you wish to call it, that's where I would mix one to two or one to three, depending on the density of the hair. Denser hair, I'll mix one to three. 
because it's easier for me to move the product through dense hair when it's more liquid, okay? So again, same thing here, and I'm making sure we get these more outside pieces, again, because we're trying to make it look like she had her hair highlighted by the sun outside on the boat. We're about to hit boating season here in Minnesota, you know, land of 10,000 lakes. So I know all our girls are going to be coming in with these fresh highlights that Mother Nature gave them. And the thing is, is I want to give them to them in the same way Mother Nature can, but better. Okay, again, following the diagonal and then coming through the ends and saturating the ends. Now that I'm about to pass the round of the head, this is where I'm gonna just take monster sections. And by monster sections, I mean they're gonna be closer to an inch deep. And that is because this is where that hair is not likely to see any sun at all if it's up in a ponytail. So take a very large section Give it a spray with my Pro Color Equalizer. And again, you can see how that immediately lays down any of the static or the frizz. Spread out my product. Often I see people using balayage boards and they have the product just in one area here. And that's fine too if it works for you, but several times I've lost my product to the floor uh, when that happens, which is never a good feeling, especially if it lands on your new shoes. Um, but moreover, again, I just think that it's the easiest way to ensure that you get the right amount of product on your brush. Okay, hold the hair taut. So, Oh, so yes, we're about to say something. Uh, Sherry says she loves the technique. Thanks, Sherry. Wait till you see what I have in store for the front. <laughs> okay. So I'm coming up a little higher on this side because I actually accidentally got a little lightener over there. So we're just going to go with it. Um, but that's okay because you're not really going to see that anyway. Okay, and again, you can see I'm really only saturating just those ends. You know, when you look at the back of my first girl here, you can see how the, it just curled her too much. A little round brush action. You can see Can you how, hold it a little lower? Oh. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> see, you can, okay, okay. <laughs> you can see how it just softly cascades to where you get a lot of that lightness on the ends but it doesn't look like your average ombre, true ombre, where it's like dark to really, really light and it's all really, really light. Um, less is more in a lot of cases, so that's where I was going with that. Um, okay. Someone said, I came late, what lightener is being used? Oh, awesome, welcome to the party. We are using a mixture of Milkshake's Decalogic Clay Lightener um, with the black lightener added into it, okay? So the class today is primarily about this baby right here, the newest powerhouse in our Decologic range, um, which is a charcoal infused lightener that will give you up to seven levels of lift, or when added into our other lighteners, will help tonalize the outcome and help our other lighteners achieve up to one more level of lift. So our clay typically would lift four levels. So in this case, I would like a little more lift than that, but a lot of tone. Um, and then I love how easy it makes the product to paint on. I mean, this is like frosting. If I didn't know better, I would be licking this board. <laughs> I'm <laughs> telling you. <laughs> I mean, it looks like frosting, right? It's so delicious looking. 
Okay, so here we are. I'm, again, I'm taking larger, thicker sections. Uh, which developer? I'm using 30 volume oxidizer. Now, if this was a client of mine, depending on the texture of her hair, I would probably be using 20. Um, but I am working on a mannequin. Mannequins are notoriously difficult to lighten, so I'm working with a little higher power. Uh, if you were going to, am I doing okay here? Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> I was just bored. <laughs> If you were going to let it air process, you could probably use a, a higher oxidizer. Um, 40 volume is the only one I very rarely, rarely, rarely reach for, and definitely never if I'm putting them inside foils. It simply gets the hair too hot. Um, and when, when we're talking about blonding, it's all about low and slow, baby. Low and slow, that is the tempo. You want to take your time. The longer it takes you to get to your goal, the healthier the hair will be. And actually, the more warmth you will break through. A lot of times we reach for the highest power lightener and the highest volume oxidizer um, when we really don't need to. The higher powered oxidizers will actually drive those gold tones deep, deep, deep into the cortex, making them very, very difficult to get out. So even though it will take you longer, you would have better luck getting through cosmetic color, especially with a 10 volume than you would a 30 volume. Uh, someone wanted to know who they contact to get milkshake products in their salon. Hey, that's an awesome question. So it depends on your area. Um, but if you go to, so you're on North, a North America's Facebook page, there should be a phone number right on the front page. Um, and a website too. So if you call that phone number, it's like 963 something something. I can't remember the rest of it. Um, they'll be able to help you out. Uh, did you just spritz with water? Why? Ooh, yay. I love this question. What did you spray? I sprayed this right here. This is Pro Color Equalizer from Color Specifics. So the whole Color Specifics range is like a gift from the Color Gods slash Z1 Concept to hairdressers. Um, this is a porosity equalizer. I use this whether I'm lightening the hair or whether I'm coloring the hair uh, to even the porosity. So especially in a case like a hand painted method, oftentimes what happens is the hair can become staticky, um, especially in the colder months. I live in Minnesota. We battle static like day in and day out um, and frizz and things like that too. So I like to use the Pro Color Equalizer to help keep the hair calm and under control while I'm applying the lightener. And another thing it does is it helps you get a more even color result, whether you're lightening or coloring. So here I'm back on my other side and I'm taking a very fine section throughout the hairline. Again, I should be able to read a newspaper through that. If you cannot, your section is too thick. If your section is too thick, you will get poor saturation. And if you get poor saturation, you'll be calling me and telling me you don't like this lightener. So, take your time. Take the appropriate section sizes. Okay. So, if those of you who are just joining, this little method I'm doing here of painting my lightener onto my board, this is a little trick you can do in the salon to help make your job easier so that getting the lightener off of the board is easier and you get the exact amount that you need. Okay, so I'm back on my hairline. So I'm taking a small amount and I'm going to really saturate and go heavy on these external pieces. And I'm doing that again because I'm trying to mimic the lightning that happens when you spend all day at the beach with your hair up in a ponytail and you get all those beautiful soft highlights all around the hairline and heavy in the front, but your hair color in the middle stays very nice and natural, okay? Kimberly uh, said she came in late. Is this the clay lightener with the black? Yes, ma'am. This is Decalogic's clay lightener mixed with our new black lightener, the charcoal infused lightener. Um, once we switch to the front, I'll be using the charcoal lightener just on its own. 
Um, so you'll get to see that as well. And I'll be using a different brush. So we'll have a softer effect. Um, and we'll talk about that when we get to the front. So what's really cool about this lightener, something that I thought was very, very interesting, is that we have fruit sugars inside here. And I can't ever remember the dang name, the science name, which is weird because I'm a science person, but something saccharides, blah, 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 saccharides anyway. <laughs> it's fruit sugar. Um, but what it does is it has a hydrating and filling effect on the hair. So we end up with hair that's in really great condition, even after we lighten it. Okay, so I took another really fine section here. And I'm just making sure that I fully saturate this so we get a nice bright pop of lightness on that hairline. Uh, Kimberly said that stuff, the black tube, is miraculous. It is miraculous. I'm telling you. I, was, I have to be real here. Sometimes I get overwhelmed with our new product releases. And even as somebody who's been with the company for so long and is Milkshake's like self-proclaimed number one fan girl, I'm like, why do I need this? Like, why do I need six lighteners in my arsenal? Um, but then I actually started using it, and very quickly I learned why. And this lightener is a powerhouse. It's really, it's a really great texture. It makes all of our other lighteners have an even better texture than they already did. Um, and it's a, it's a, it's got great lightening abilities without being aggressive. Um, and if you if you can have something that lightens and tones in one step, why not? Okay, so I'm at the hairline again here, at the little pivot point. And so I'm taking a fine section and I'll be painting on the underneath side of this. <clears throat> and I will do my best to stay sort of out of the way. Um, but it's a little challenging where I'm at. So, okay, and I'm doing it on this side because when she pulled her hair up, I want to see that blonde. Especially heading into the warmer months. We have so many people who want to lighten their hair. We focus all on the top, in the inner form, around the face, all that stuff. And then they pull their hair up and we don't see it, right? Around the hairline we just see darkness. Okay, so we'll let that drop. And then I'll come back and I'll start taking a little bit of a larger section here. Okay. And I'm just following the curve of the head. Not too complicated. Every section I spray with the Pro Color Equalizer it helps me gain control of the hair, keep control of the hair, and it helps my color result come out more even. Especially when you are lightening over cosmetic color, which this time of the year most of us are. Um, and that is really, you know, Decologic Black can be used for any color of hair on any technique, but where it really, really shines is in its removal of cosmetic color or removing dark shades from the hair. And that's because of the charcoal. And that charcoal not only tones the hair, but it's a powerful antioxidant. So what I'm doing here, same thing I did on the other side, is I'm coming in on a diagonal, okay? It doesn't have to match the other side exactly. I think a lot of times in the salons, we overthink it and we get very, very paranoid about it being exact. But what we need to remember is hair is free flowing, it's free moving, it has a life of its own. It doesn't have to be exact, it just has to be close. Okay, so I'm taking another section about the same size. Your section size is gonna vary based on the density of the hair. This mannequin actually has quite dense hair. Um, but as I move up, remember I take larger and larger sections so that it remains the deepest and darkest through that densest area. And that's where the hair is naturally darkest anyway. It's right around that growth pattern in the back, um, just around the crown. All right, 
right, y'all. Here we go. Moving through the next section here. Taking a little product on my brush. And I'm going to set that diagonal towards the back. Now, could you alternate and do diagonal this way and diagonal this way? Sure. Can you saturate the whole thing? Sure. Of course you can. You could use this exact same technique with different saturation and you would have a different look. That's what I love about hair color and techniques is it's kind of like, it's a paint by number, but it's so customizable. Okay. Once again, I'm saturating the ends really well. We'll drop that out. So this is a technique that is going to lighten every strand of the hair, but in such a way that it looks very soft, very natural, and very delicate. Um, especially in the post-COVID world. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I do a lot of service industry folk here in the salon, and I have a lot of my clients who are just broke. They're just broke. Um, and that's okay. It's my job to get something, you know, to get them into something that they can maintain um, and that fits their budget. So this would be one of those looks. The maintenance is extremely low. They may have to come in for a toner every once in a while, um, or you send them home with our Silver Shine shampoo and conditioner, and that helps them to maintain their tone at home. but it's low maintenance. And if, if your client never wanted to touch it up, they wouldn't have to. They could just let it grow out because it's such a soft blend. All right. So now I've got to the ends, I'm going to saturate more. Okay, boom, boom, baby. And again, keeping that lightness going up higher toward the outside. That way when the hair is pulled up, we get all that nice blonde throughout the outside. Love this technique too, because any way that, if you do this technique on a client, any way that they wear their hair afterwards, they're gonna have convertible hair color. If they wear it down, they'll have more depth through the internal area and more lightness just through the ends. If they wear it up, they will have tons of lightness on the exterior and in their ponytail. If they wear it braided, they will get the best of both worlds. And if they wear it curled, depending on whether they go to or away from their face, if it's curled, curled? What? <laughs> curled? <laughs> Toward the face, it would be darker. If it's curled away from the face, it would be lighter. Okay, so now I've passed kind of the round of the head here. So I'm starting to take much thicker sections. And that's because I don't want as much saturation here. The thicker the, sec the section, the lower the saturation. Okay, my board's not quite empty yet, so I'm going to come in. And I'm just going to... Start laying that in. Should I turn her? A bit, perhaps. Okay. Take more lightener. Okay, boom, bam. Chicken and ham. Can you guys hear my stomach growling? Oh my gosh. It's loud. You need to talk louder. <laughs> you talk louder so you can't <laughs> hear my stomach growling? <laughs> It's always great when you're at the shampoo bowl and your stomach growls and it's directly in your client's ear, too. <laughs> okay. So I just had to reload, get some more light now. Okay, come on here. Okay. And again, this is really just a surface application. If you were able to look underneath here, you wouldn't see any saturation. OK, 
okay, until I get to just these ends here, and then I'll fully saturate them. Two more sections here, and then I'll show you my fun top ponytails. which don't require any further sectioning. And again, using a flat clip instead of like your jaws or anything that's got like a serrated or a grippy kind of bite to it is gonna help you when you're doing any kind of hand painted techniques because the less bins in the hair that we have, the, the better the outcome, the smoother the application um, and the less you fuss with it the less you have to fuss with it to get the product on there so okay take a little more come in on the outside and then still following that diagonal working only on the surface of the hair Okay, once I get to the bottom here, this is where I'm going to saturate fully. One last section here, do the same thing, spread some more product. a little misty my pro color equalizer again that is evening out the porosity of the hair strand uh, making my lightning results come out more evenly and also giving me better control of the hair okay a little product saturate just the top part of the strand so it takes a light touch. Does anybody else ever like find themselves holding their breath when they're doing hand painted techniques? Like trying to be so delicate. Another little bit of product, start to saturate now that I'm at those ends. takes us through the back. Now in a non-education setting, that's something you could whip out in probably 10 minutes, maybe 15. So this really in a salon setting, this is a lot faster um, than what it seems here. So I'm going to keep these in their ponytail and what I'm going to do is focus on the last third of that hair, okay? So imagine if this hair at the ponytail were stretched out, it would be about here. So that would be the first third, second third, third third. And utilizing the same formula I have in my bowl, I'm going to take, and now we get to get our hands in it. Okay, I'm gonna saturate that ponytail. This is the part I love because the texture of this lightener is incredible, like frosting. Again, you'll wanna eat it, but please don't. And I'm gonna fully saturate those ends. Look how creamy that is, it goes on so easily. And then I'm going to give it a little feathering just with my fingers, okay? Boom. I'm gonna do the same exact thing for the other ponytail. And again, I'm still using, still using the Decalogic Black Lightener mixed in with the Decalogic Clay 
balayage lightener. And the reason for that is I want slightly more lift than what the clay can give me. Um, but I still want control and I want that clay feel and I want that clay consistency. Okay, so same thing, I'm focusing on the last third of the hair. Keeping those sections up in their ponytails. And then I'll just take and give this a little smoogy smoo. Doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be close. And we're gonna let that sit. Alrighty. So as I'm cleaning up and setting up for my second formula here, um, I'll review again. Uh, this technique focuses on creating the same illusion that the sun creates when your hair is lightened by the sun, only um, a little bit more intense, okay? So I'm actually gonna get rid of these for right now. Somewhere. Huh? Oh, okay. All right, y'all. We do have uh, a guest who's just gonna take a seat and uh, hang out because we're just finishing up our class. I'm going to show you um, this other sign here. Wow, we really rocked through that. That was going by fast, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll show you um, the technique for this sign and the fringe. And then um, I'll recap and I will finish this out um, and post a picture of this. And I'll kind of recap for the other gal too. So, okay. Mixing up. Do you want to get this, Julian? Yes. It's funny how fast time goes. So I'll mix up the black lightener. One to one and a half. So I'm going to do 40 grams. And then I'm going to do 60 grams of the 30 volume. And I'm going to apply this using a sponge applicator. So we've come out with all these new brushes. Um, and I love the sponge applicator because it allows me to get a much softer effect than if I were just using um, any other kind of brush. Okay, so it mixes up nicely. You can see the consistency there. It'll begin to thicken up uh, once it sits. I'm choosing the one to one and a half mix ratio because I am going to paint this, okay? So I have my sponge here, this little spongy baby. And I will be working in these diagonal forward sections. Spraying with my Pro Color Equalizer. And then remember we're doing like a ponytail, right? So I'm gonna focus the lightness here, set it on that same diagonal that I was using. Oh, but now I don't need my board anymore. I can just dip because the consistency of this is really nice, okay? And the sponge gives you a much softer, look, it barely even moves the hair, okay? Then I just come in like this and back brush it. This lightener is made with charcoal again, so it tones the hair. It fights any kind of free radicals that are in the hair, pollution, etc. Um, it's got a fruit complex in there, fruit sugars, so it helps to condition the hair and it has more of a filling effect. Um, and it's also made with clay and cranberry and silk proteins as well. So what that does is it helps to repair the hair too, okay? Sticking to more of a surface application towards the exterior. Okay, what I may do here is clip this one back. Oh my gosh, I'm getting my girl all 
messy. Everybody's with me so far? If you have any other questions, now would be the time to ask them while I still have you here before we wrap it up. How close to noon are we? It's 12.01. Oh, shoot, okay. I just got in the zone. Okay, guys, I'm gonna finish this section. Hopefully Mary's okay with that. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> So law and reality, I told you we were getting this done in between clients here. So this is sort of how the world works these days. Like, oh, we've got time. Let's do it. Um, so thank you, Mary. Thank you, Jillian, too. And thanks to everybody who joined me today. I'll get through this front section quickly, and then I'll show you what I did for the fringe. So now you'll see it's all on real time, right? Come on. Stick that back there. Sometimes um, if you're having a trouble getting these films to stick, sometimes the foil could work a little better here too. It's just whatever works for you. I like to just clip onto the hair. We'll pull that one back and we'll stick that there. All right. A few more sections here. So again, I'm using the little spongy baby because it gives me a lot softer of a result. And especially around that face, I like it to be seamless. So I go real heavy toward the hairline. And then the rest of this, we can just go right in. The sponge helps us keep from going too deep into that section. Okay. And we're just saturating that top. Uh, Vivi commented, beautiful. Congratulations from Guatemala City. Oh, thank you. Wow, shout out to Guatemala City. That's like probably the furthest away person. We can. Maybe not, I don't know. We get people watching from all over the globe. Okay. Now, if you want way more lightness around the face, you could take smaller sections. In this case, I'm going for a little more subtlety, so we will take larger sections. If you're still with me here, I appreciate you turning up today, and I thank you for your time. As we celebrate this incredible product, Decologic Black Lightener. Again, you can get up to six level, I'm sorry, up to seven levels of lift. You can get more lift out of the other milkshake lighteners if you add it into them. Of course, with the exception of Total Roots, we don't recommend that you add it into Total Roots. And this is a product that lightens and tones in one set. When I post the follow-up to this, I will post a picture of my first mannequin as well. Um, and I'll even include the toning formulas that I uh, chose for her because I did still tone her simply because I want to, but not because I had to. Okay. Little heavier around the face here because this whole entire part will be visible when she pulls her hair back. And again, using that sponge because it gives me a much softer effect, okay? Now I continue through the entire fringe with the exact same methodology. 
The only difference is that instead of taking these diagonal partings, what I do is take them horizontally, okay? So I'll show you the sectioning and then I'll do a quick recap so we can, so I would section here and I would paint this back and then I would do the same thing here, a little heavier around the hairline and paint it back. And then I just repeat the exact same thing. So you can see it's the same all the way through. The only difference is really in the back, we use the clay lighter mixed in with the Decalogic Black. And in the front, we use just the Decalogic Black. So this was my belly that I did, um, that I prepped a few days ago, just to kind of show the end result of this look, especially because a lot of times we don't end up with the time. Okay, so in the, this is the same exact placement. You can see how natural it looks. And then if she were to pull the hair back, let's see if I can get a good shot here. You see all that beautiful lightness in there? And in fact, when Jillian came in and saw this, she's like, ooh, oh. So, and that's toned with 7.13 um, with a few grams of 7.1 in smoothies in it, okay? So the underlying pigment was already nice. I just wanted to control that warmth a little. And you can see she's got that really sun-kissed look with just a little product. I'll be following up. I'll finish up my mannequin um, and I'll make sure to get them both styled out and looking beautiful. And I'll take some photos um, and just sort of recap everything for you guys. Thanks a lot for joining me today. Um, I always wish that I had more time because I could go on and on about this product, but it truly is a powerhouse. If you haven't tried it yet, please do. Um, and if you have tried it, I'd love to hear the feedback from you. Thanks a lot, you guys.